So it's important that your dowel pins obviously are in for number one. Uh, you got four on this side, one on the other case half. But the other uh, side of the spectrum is you want to make sure they're not too long. You know, this was oversized, bore lined, uh, 20 thousandths over. Uh, kind of had some uh, concerns presented to me, but uh, just measured them out. And, you know, they're eight millimeters long total. No, no more than eight millimeters long total. And then I just went through and measured how far they were poking out. If it will move. Okay, well, I'm gonna shorten that part. So these were no more than about 3.03, you know, not much more than three. And I stuck them in the bearing side for each one and I kept them in the same positions as well. And they were no more than like four and a half millimeters. So they will not be too long. So that is good. Uh, you want to make sure, again, uh, dowel pen hole is towards the flywheel. So we're going to put this one in here. Something else you want to look for um, for the bearings. I've seen some aluminum blocks, you know, the aftermarket stuff. Uh, that worry, you know, you have your dowel pin on towards the flywheel, but the actual uh, oil galley hole was not in line with here. And I seen them kind of, you know, where the oil galley was, they'd mark it and they'd kind of uh, rough it, uh, take a Dremel with a bit on there and kind of open up that spot so that the oil would go into the galley right here from the oil galley hole. All right, so now I'm going to take here carefully my number one and number two cylinder. I'm going to rotate this thing a little bit. Move the holes accordingly. Bearings, try to face them down. This thing's gonna probably rotate on me. But you want to get it, sit it in there carefully. Um, and once you get it in there, you can adjust. Sit it in there hard for sure because we want like i said you want to make sure that these are uh properly aligned with the dowel hole so i've marked the bearings it should be right about there Should be seated. Should rotate pretty freely. Assembly fluid's kind of sticky. All right, so it's sitting down. Just make sure you look underneath. It's sitting down. You know, this should not rotate. This should not rotate. And then another. A method that I've seen on YouTube to kind of assist with making sure that you've got it seated. Uh, you put the other bearing that's going to go in the other case half and you make sure that it doesn't rock. So, unfortunately, it is rocking right now. So it's not fully seated. So I'm going to tinker with it a little bit. Just gently, because you don't want to crush your bearings. Alright, real quick. So everything seems good. Um, I've already put the lifters in. I'm going to put a little bit of assembly fluid on that too. This in the lube. I've already put some oil in there. That should be fine, but I just want to make sure. But you want to make sure that these things go in here pretty good and they rotate. You know, if you get a tight one, try to try it out in another hole. See how it works. See if maybe it'll make a difference. Um, you should definitely make sure they're lubed up. 
before we install this puppy. All right, so I just assembled the uh, gear on the cap. Uh, nothing real crazy. Just make sure that the dot's facing outwards when it's installed, it's facing towards the front of the engine. But main pressure instructions was 20 inch pounds, or foot pounds rather, um, for these bolts. And I put a teeny bit of thread locker on there just to make sure they don't come out. Now we're going to put some assembly lube where um, the crankshaft's going. This is a 63 block, so it doesn't have uh, bearings in there. I know some people are going to frown upon that with a semi-performance engine, but I'm not building it to race. Something else I want to make sure you point out uh, that I didn't. So that timing mark, when you have this gear installed, that back lobe needs to be in the bottom position. But the mating surfaces for the uh, lifters right here, you make sure you clean them. I clean them off with a little bit of... Uh, carb cleaner you can use whatever the heck just just use something to clean them off i suggest before you put this on here it's very important uh put them on the lifters and also on the lobes of where uh, the camshaft is going to be striking the lifters as well um, and the manufacturer instructions for this one is to run it i believe 2500 rpms for uh 15 minutes as soon as you start it so go from there Make sure you don't get this on anything else other than those mating surfaces. This is not lubrication. Let's piss a bearing off real quick. Probably gonna take some of that off and put them on the other ones. But do that same thing for the other side and then put a little bit on the lobes. Make sure, again, you don't get it on where the bearing is going to be. All right, so this next step is pretty imperative. Um, trying to get you guys to see them, but there are two dots. They're right here. You need those to line up with the dot is on the uh, crank gear, okay? If it's not lined up, it's not going to work out for you. Let's talk about back there. You can see the two dots in between each other. It's very clear, but you can make sure that happens. All right, so we've got that uh, cam installed. I've already put some uh, lube on there, but I'm just going to throw a little bit more, some oil. Just a little bit. And you want to make sure that it does not walk out. Things rotating pretty good. Should be a little stiff with that fluid. It's going pretty good. All right. All right. For this next step, I'm just going to check um, the clearances, like I said, for the crankshaft um, because it is a stroker. I want to make sure that it is. Uh, good to go, and it's not going to hit anywhere on the, uh, we make sure that it doesn't hit the rod uh, bolt heads, because it is a little bit of a stroker. That's not anything extreme, but it is a little bit of a stroker, so we want to make sure it's good to go. All right, we got everything in. Um, about to take these studs out for the uh, fuel pump. I'm about to put a block off on there. CB performance. Uh, the coil is going to go on there. Uh, this is really neat. It doesn't damage the threads. You can take them off, take them back on. Got a magnet behind there. That way, uh, if anything pops out, it'll hopefully catch it. Trying to keep this thing clean. All right, so I got my studs out, got my gasket. Also, too, if you do buy a CB Performance uh, block off with the uh, mount for the coil, uh, make sure you get something to plug it unless you plan on using it. Uh, I've seen people use it for uh, turbo applications and stuff like that, but obviously, I'm not going to be using 
use anything. Um, so. Threads. Let's see if that one back up. So, make sure it uh, goes in pretty freely. I've already checked the measurements on the thread. Make sure they're the same. But just gonna tighten it up, hand tight, um, and keep going. All right. <clears throat> so I am ready to put the case halves together. Um, everything's good to go. Uh, you know, I had my uh, bearing on there. It didn't rock. I'm about to install the cam plug. Uh, you know, everything's torqued down. Everything's seated, good to go. Um, I've got my break-in uh, lube for the cam. The lifters are in the other uh, that side. The lifters are in the other side with the lifter clips on there. I've got the last bearing in the other side of the case. Uh, Everything's everything's good to go. I'm going to be using the ultra black gasket maker um, I'm gonna put my cam plug in there But yeah should be good to go All right, so I got my cam plug in there you gotta make sure you don't get any of this stuff uh, near the cam uh, but I'm gonna put it on the outer edges of uh, the Case halves on both halves. Um, I cleaned it with uh, a rag and some carb cleaner kind of get, make sure that all the oil was off the outer edges that way it get a good bond in between the two case halves uh, but yeah all right we've got everything good to go we're gonna put uh, case halves together So move in. All right, so now if I can find my crap. Um, everything's seated pretty good. Now I'm gonna put the washers, the main hardware on. I'm gonna put a little bit of a little bit of silicone in here too. I'm just going to snug them up for now. Snug up the centers. Um, even after you snug them, it's a good idea to you know, just make sure that they're, the crank is still moving freely. Shouldn't have any. Any resistance really 
Um, I mean, you're going to have a little bit because obviously, I've, like for me, I've got the, the breaking lube, um, assembly lube. But, you know, you definitely shouldn't have, you know, it's, it's free in one spot, and then you keep rotating and it gets, you know, hard to rotate. Something wrong. I would stop immediately. Pull the case has part, unfortunately, and check it out and see what's going on. So good. All right, so we're going to torque it first to 15 foot pounds, which isn't much. Sure rotates. And Definitely make sure you use uh, new hardware on all these builds. It's kind of important. All right, that's it for the main. All right, then we're going to finish up putting the washers and, and hardware uh, nuts on all the rest of it at the bottom side of this hump. Uh, then you got a couple of bolts and nuts as well. We're going to snug the sucker up and then we're going to uh, torque those down. This manual is saying 14 foot pounds, uh, but I've heard uh, 16, 17 through other people.